Hello, my name is Katie Henches, and I'm the Director of Programs for the Child Neurology Foundation. Thank you for listening in to this video about the experience of getting a pediatric rare disease diagnosis. Our first speaker today is Amy White, a genetic counselor at Mayo Clinic, and our second speaker is Whitney McHugh, who's the mother of a child with molybdenum cofactor deficiency, MOCD type A which is a very rare deficiency resulting in sulfite toxicity that causes severe intellectual disability and seizures, among other symptoms. With that, I'm going to pass it over to Amy to kick off the discussion. Thanks, Katie, and thank you for having us here today. Um, like you said, I'm Amy White, and I'm a genetic counselor, and in my past, I've worked at Children's Hospital of Wisconsin caring for pediatric genetics patients, but more recently, I'm working in the Mayo Clinic Biochemical Genetics Laboratory, where I call out abnormal test results to doctors. And I am Whitney, and I am a mother to two daughters. My oldest daughter, Indiana, is 15 and my youngest daughter, Willow, is nine, and she has molybdenum cofactor deficiency type A. Well, Whitney, it's so good to see you again. Um, for those watching this video, I want to share that we do know each other, and I was honored to be on the team involved in your daughter's initial diagnosis and care. So Whitney, would you please share with us the experience of your daughter, Willow's diagnosis with molybdenum cofactor deficiency type A? I had a normal pregnancy with Willow and I had no idea anything was wrong. She was born May 11th, 2012 via planned C-section. Everything went fine and we went home on Mother's Day that year. Within the next few weeks going forward, things only seemed to get worse. Willow was not eating and sleeping normally and I became concerned. So at five weeks old, I took Willow to our local ER they did some standard blood work and checked her out and everything came back normal. So we went home and over the next week, things only got worse. She would scream bloody murder and feeding her was a struggle. So on June 24th, 2012, I had taken her back to our local hospital where she was admitted. During that day, the doctors could not get her to eat. She did not sleep and all she did was cry. So later that afternoon, they become very concerned that something was wrong in her brain and they sent her down for a CT scan, which results showed that she had brain swelling and edema. They were very concerned. So they contact Flight for Life, where Willow was transferred down to Children's Hospital, Wisconsin on June 24th. Over the next 10 days, they did many, many different testings. She was having seizures, so they put her on several different seizure medications to control them. And on July 4th, 2012, Willow's diagnosis was molybdenum cofactor deficiency. From that point, we needed to find out if Willow was a type A or type B of the disease. Type Bs are typically late presenters and do not respond to the treatment of CPMP. On July 13th, 2012, Willow defined all the odds and came back as a type A molybdenum cofactor deficiency. To receive the treatment, Germany wanted one last set of MRIs to determine whether or not they wanted to treat a child as old as Willow. Within a few days, we got the results and Germany says yes, they are willing to give Willow a shot at life. So on June, July 18th, 2012, Willow received her first infusion of CPMP. Within a few days, her lab work all started to go back to normal range and she started to make huge improvements. So Whitney, would you tell us what it's been like to care for a child with a severe disorder like MOCD type A? It's definitely never easy to take care of a child that is severely disabled. When Willow was younger, she looked normal and as they get older, more medical complications occur. Um, Willow is on continuous oxygen. She's on a BiPAP machine at night. She is GJ tube fed. She has a Broviac central line for her daily infusions and is on many, many medications. Willow endured um, back to back pneumonias for about four years of her life, um, which caused damage to her lungs. And in 2017, I decided to put Willow through an extensive spine surgery to save her lungs from her scoliosis, crushing them. It was the absolute best decision I could have ever made for her life quality 
and I couldn't be happier with the results. She has been pneumonia free for several years of her life. So definitely not easy to take care of a child and make decisions on my own, but God um, definitely doesn't give you more than what you can handle. And when you talk to medical professionals and family and friends, they help you make the right decisions for her quality of life. Thank you for sharing that. And Whitney, what would you say to parents who have a newly diagnosed child with molybdenum cofactor deficiency? There are always going to be bumps in the road, but as a parent, you do everything you need to do to make sure that your child is as happy and healthy as possible. When Willow was diagnosed, there were no other families in the United States for me to connect with for support. We were the very beginning. Here almost a decade later, what was once an experimental drug to treat children in hopes of them to respond and live more normal lives is now FDA approved. That is going to make all the difference for the future of our babies. This is going to help early diagnosis so that other children do not have to live like my daughter Willow. And that has been my main goal from the very beginning is to save children's lives in a generation that I wasn't even sure I would see. And I'm seeing it already. And I'm so honored to be a part of the change about the positive um, things that have happened with this rare disease and in hopes of someday even finding treatment for the type Bs um, so that they can live longer and healthier lives with their families that truly love them. Whitney, it's such an amazing story and experience. And um, you know that I'm so um, impressed by everything that you have done. You've been an amazing mom and caregiver. And I also acknowledge that you don't have a choice, right? As a parent, if you, as you've said, you do what you need to do. But I think that all of this work and time and energy that you've put into your beautiful little girl is really going to help so many others. And so with, go ahead. <laughs> It absolutely is going to help um, our future children being diagnosed. Um, I have helped create a um, support group that we want to offer future families to be able to join our small family for this rare genetic disease. Um, it is on Facebook and it is called Molybdenum Cofactor Deficiency Support Group. There are a few questions you have to answer and we would love for you to join and um, be able to communicate as a small family for such a rare genetic disease. Thank you too for sharing that wonderful resource. And so with that, I'm going to go back to Katie so she can wrap this up. Thank you, Amy and Whitney for your insight into the rare disease experience. If you have any questions about MLCD type A or would like to use CNF resources, please visit our website at www.childneurologyfoundation.org. Thank you.